Do you want a Porsche 911 suitable for the racetrack, but with a naturally aspirated engine? Well, then this is here for you. This is the updated Porsche 911 GT3. Exclusively with all the changes, both for the normal GT3 and also for the GT3 Touring, which is then a little bit more suitable for the normal road again. All you need to know about both models and the updates and the changes with Thomas Nautical in 4K full screen, full length. Let's go, starting with the main 911 GT3. This new update here, this is really made for the race trick, but also that you can drive to the race track with the same vehicle, use it on the track and then drive back again. This is also equipped with the optional Weissach package. Listen and repeat, Weissach. That's uh, named then after the place of development. And here you can see this also has then this visible carbon fiber in the front and these air outgoings. So here, the air comes in here, then there's the cooler, then there's a lot of coolant flying basically around the vehicle and the hot air comes out here and also serving in here that's actually entering faster with these extra openings. This is special to the GT3 and the normal 911 doesn't have these really large openings. Then headlamps. LED, matrix LED is standard. These ones here are the HD matrix LED, and this is actually an option. So with this update here, with the facelift, what did they do? First of all, the GT3 always has a double wishbone in the front. This is special then, so only these top race oriented models have these and not a normal 911. And then they actually reduce the diving in the front. So usually when you are at really high speeds, start to be hard on the brakes and then just by physics, the front dives a little bit in and that also changes the aerodynamics and they could reduce that. And their racing test driver said that this is a significant change then especially for the racetrack. Also the whole suspension has been reworked and the length is four meters 57 or 180 inches. This is actually unchanged. Wheels are always 20 inch in the front, but then 21 inch in the rear and here, it's not only the Weissach package, but also on top of that, here these optional magnesium wheels. And behind that was also an option, the carbon ceramic brake. So this is then yeah, almost the top spec you can get overall here in this classic white color also. Then the Weissach package also includes here this CFRP roof. So this also brings down the weight on top of the vehicle and towards uh, the rear. This is the main difference than the GT3 and the Touring, which we'll soon explain you all about. This one here has the fixed rear wing and it would look like this also almost in the base version. But here then the side flaps are a little bit different in the Weissach package and also has this visible carbon fiber here on the outside. Then we can see the light strip goes all the way through, though this is like taking from the normal 911 world. Also this Porsche lettering here, very visible, three-dimensional, pretty cool. And here for the GT3 facelift, they put a new diffuser and in the normal GT3, it is a little bit more pronounced, has these longer, wider flaps. It's a little bit less, a little bit smaller than here in the Touring. Soon going to show that to you. And these exhaust tips here, are just the real deal. There's no, no fake tip whatsoever. And also the sound is not fake at all. And since it's here this rear engine concept, I cannot open the hood and show that to you. The only thing I can do is this service flap to open that one. And you know, in, in the normal 911, it already looks funny, <laughs> but here it looks even funnier because it's really cute. It's only this really, really tiny small flap there then to fill in some fluids right there. <laughs> That's it. But I can tell you more uh, about the engine just by looking at the vehicle from the outside. So they still, and it says here 4.0, they still employ a four liter flat six cylinder. These flat engines, the famous Boxer motor by Porsche, 510 horsepower and either a seven speed PDK or a six speed manual. So both choices are still available. And actually it depends on the market what customers rather go for. In general, for example, in the US, people rather take this one here, the normal GT3, also for the racing, together with the manual, whereas customers in Europe rather take the 
touring version with the manual. But overall the split is basically 50-50, so uh, the PDK is better in the performance. So the acceleration difference from 0 to 1 kilometers an hour, 6 to miles an hour, is half a second. That is a massive difference. It wasn't like that like you know, maybe like 20 years ago or something, but today it's a massive difference if you have an, um, like, a high, like a high performance PDK, it's so a dual clutch transmission, or if you go with manual and it is either 3.4 seconds or 3.9 seconds then in the acceleration figure, 3.9 then for the manual. The weight, by the way, is um, this is here almost the, the most lightweight combination you could have. So like it is here, normal GT3, then the magnesium wheels and well in this case this one has the PDK soon going to show it to you but if you would then put the manual this would be the lightest configuration this is then at 1420 kilograms which is in today's sports cars world which you can legally drive and with 510 horsepower is really really lightweight still same goes for the gt3 touring this is then if you say like hey my primary focus is not the racetrack but I rather want to have, you know, some more like subtleness on the road, for example, also visually. And they now introduce this additional lip here. So it does not have the huge fixed ring, uh, wing to be a little bit more subtle on the road. But then this one was uh, actually put here because this is here an adaptive ring, so it can go up and down. But if you have this additional small lip here, the speed at which it has to go up this is in its way higher so it actually goes up later and this was intentionally because the developers want to have like this sleek look most of the time unless you go really really high speeds then the gt3 touring also has this new diffuser style with the upgrade but here these flaps are not that large as in the normal gt3 same exhaust graphic here of course and then here because this is a little bit lighter from that you can even better see here the three-dimensional Porsche lettering all in the bright styling here now. The white color is just, just called white by the way. This one here is called Oak Green Neo and you can see when we have a little bit more light then you see these nuances um, in, in the paint. Kudo, Joao, Alinche, Sean, Kudageo. These wheels here, same dimensions, 21 inch in the rear, 20 in the front. These here are, however, not the magnesium wheels. And then there's like a big package difference, whereas you can get the Weissach package for the normal GT3, race track oriented. You can get a lightweight package here for the GT3 Touring. This one is not equipped with it to also show you like the, the difference. And this one also includes the magnesium wheels. Therefore, the lightweight package is more expensive than the Weissach package, which at first sight doesn't seem logical, but it's because the magnesium wheels are included here automatically then, whereas with the other one it's an option, because these magnesium wheels, maybe if you want to have a race track used, you don't want to damage them that easily with race track, uh, small stones and, and so on. That's the, the logic behind it. And here, once again, from the front, our green vehicle, you can see here these large cooling holes here in the front. They are yeah, they're making this look so special. But then again, you can see the GT3 Touring also works maybe like from the first side and as a more or less normal 911. But then of course, when you turn on the engine, hear the sound and also have this naturally aspirated engine from the whole characteristic, it becomes something different. And of course, you feel the lightweight building of the vehicle. We already have a driving part of the pre facelift version. You can check that out later, for example. And to me, the most special thing about the naturally aspirated engines are always that it has a more natural driving feeling. So when you have like um, these turbos, for example, or maybe also with electric helper systems and so on, at some point you get like this very sudden boost and the naturally aspirated engines, they have, you know, it, it, it feels more linear, like this, this whole, uh, whole performance curve and you just get somehow a little bit better feeling for the vehicle. Even though, of course, with a turbo you can reach better acceleration figures, you know, uh, but here, of course, 3.4 seconds is still very impressive, especially for a naturally aspirated engine. And why did they also have to rework this vehicle here? Because they needed to uh, lower the particle emissions, the emissions overall and so on, by regulatory reasons. But at the same time, you know, this usually costs always like performance and so on. But they try to do everything that although it emits less, they could still keep it at the very same power output. And that's also what they have done here. And then for everyone who like really wants to push it, the red line is also still at 9,000 
RPM. This is also something really special that you have a naturally aspirated naturally aspirate engine and still, you know, go at 9,000 RPM. Of course, not always useful to use it, um, but it's good to know that it actually does work. Turning indicators here, by the way, in the rear, super wide and a nice integration. And since this one here is the Touring, here, this one again has the surface flap that goes over the whole, yeah, almost the whole width. There we go. So you see, yeah, the main difference is the surface flap between the GG3 and GG3 Touring. <laughs> it's also like, really like, it, it appears to be fragile. You know, always you have to think, oh, I have to be gentle to close this again. <laughs> And the turning indicators in the front, they actually replace the daytime running light then temporarily. And they have this four dot design and even the side indicator here is like a little bit visible already from the front. Khaki looks like this. It's here in this case, in this case, which is, I don't know, not necessary, I, I would say. And then here, door closing sound is really solid, although these are frameless doors, of course, and even dual insulation. Um, so yeah, rare for a race car, <laughs> let's take it that way. Then here, for example, here, born in Flacht, is like a test circuit. So also a nice paddle light for that. Then we have special features like, here from the Weissach package, the carbon fiber here also for the handles, even more weight savings, and also, you know, general here, GT3, look at that, this net here, just as another, uh, yeah, racing weight saving measure. Then here in the front, you can then activate the service flap, open it or in the front and the trunk. We'll also soon take a look at that. And then here, this normal GT3 is all about the race text, the microfiber here on the steering wheel already, pretty cool. Also real buttons at the steering wheel, drive mode selector. And these here are the bucket seats, also with the race text. And the sport seat would come as base and then the bucket seat as an option. And this, of course, in the more, let's say, racetrack proved feature, you have to squeeze yourself in. You can here adjust the length. Now we sit to the steering wheel. It's, of course, always, you know, really upright from this whole, uh, you know, area. And it really caters you in. And this is the solution, indeed, for the racetrack that you don't move right and left. Um, it always depends also on your individual body posture, which seat is better. But, um, yeah. Probably in most case I would go for a normal sport seat unless you go for the race track. Then this one is more suitable. And also because of another feature here in the headrest, I'm going to so show that to you very soon. Um, There's a new feature which is really, really interesting. The steering wheel itself has a manual control here. Once again, weight savings in, out, up and down. And you can find a good position then here for you. And headroom here with 189, six for two. So this is no problem because there needs to be also some space left because in this vehicle here, people will also wear a helmet. The only other thing you can adjust here, by the way, with the seat here, when you press this one, then it's an electric function and it goes actually higher. Which leads me to the question, this electric motor, the small one, isn't that too much weight? <laughs> and you might have seen it in some of my reviews where I was on the racetrack with some cars and there were regulations on location where you had to wear a helmet inside the vehicle. And then I was often driving like this because, you know, when you have a helmet on, then you're like this far away from the head restraint and you're like, yeah. And they thought of that. And so here, this head restraint here, you can search a button underneath, release. Uh, there we go, press it. And then in the top, they're like, they're like these hinges. And you can uh, put it down, there we go. So here. And then you can remove that one for wearing a helmet. And then you just have more space then to wear that helmet on the racetrack. So um, that's also a good feature then for real racing drivers. This here, the normal GT3, is only available with two seats. And then option, you can also get this carbon fiber overall cage. This is like really, really stiff. Hope you fully, you will never need that. But this, of course, an additional safety measure, and this, of course, all tuned to full racing style. Then, with the Weissach package, it's also here all the way in race tracks, ra race text, also here on the dashboard. So that's a pretty cool feature here. Yeah, you should probably just comb it all the way in the same direction. Then, <laughs> red contour stitches, also here, all the way race tech covered here, also for the cup holder, for example, that comes out. 
Yeah, not sure if I would use it uh, while being on the racetrack. <laughs> Here the Weissach batch also, together with more visible carbon fiber. And another special thing is that um, no matter where you put the key, this one here still keeps this um, turn on the ignition with a like, key for a like turning uh, structure here on the left side of the of the stalled column. And special here to the GT3 is, look at that, this is the PDK selector, not a small one, but here I like a real one that looks like a manual shifter. And the interesting thing is like when you go here from P and then to the gears or back to P, this is like a like a real wire, you know, you can also feel that. But then, you know, like in D, the different gears, this is then shift by wire in a sense of electronical, you know what I mean? So like the first step is manual, mechanical, and then the real shifting steps, these are then done electronically. And you can also go here with the like sequential uh, press forward and backward, or you can also use here at the steering wheel, of course, the shifting pedals to do that. So you still have a manual feeling, although you have a PDK. Driver POV here, very important. Once again, with the drive mode selection right here, that's very easy to do then while driving and also nice clicking feedback here. This is how you control the digital instruments. They can change your views how you want to have it. And yeah, very well visible, of course, all the different gauges. And then towards the right side, first of all, we have here lower part. For example, this is here still the volume selection, manual and climate unit here. It does get blocked a little bit, of course, and here with the you know cool shifting lever, that's the thing. So sometimes you think about like, where shall I reach that? So that's a trade-off, you know, to have this cool thing, then it does block this one. When you have the small integration here of an automatic shifting lever, then it leaves you more space to control the climate unit here. That's the thing. What would you prefer? Tell me in the comments. Then you also have this front lift function here, for example, with this feature. You also hear it and it says here, front end is raising. So then you can also save the geo locations of that, that at, maybe at home in a basement garage, it's always getting activated again. That's very interesting. And it shall never be missing here, the stopwatch in the top part, such a classic, right? And something small where the GT3 also profits from the 911 face tips here when you raise the armrest, more space for your smartphone and the inductive charging is now also cooled. So it doesn't overheat, but you can also use the cable chargers, of course, for Apple CarPlay. So let's just imagine I'm in the passenger seat. No, let's not imagine that. Never. <laughs> yeah, but um, what I want to point out is when I would be in the passenger seat and then, of course, there could be more space in the rear then. Um, so here, pull this one again. Seat belt, um, yeah, with the seat belt is the question like over or under it. Um, so this is probably the best solution, seat belt under, and then I know what's coming now, time codes, Thomas in the rear seats, and this time it's really justified. Um, so I want to be really, really careful not to damage the vehicle. Um, hmm. Well, it worked to put the seat back again, but now, hmm, no, <laughs> defo not. Um, but I'm still proud of myself that I managed to get in there, actually. <laughs> of course, there's also the frunk right here, and it's both for both, ver for both versions, the same actually here, and you can see it also fits a cabin trolley. Um, you can also play some uh, Tetris, and then put it in like this, and then put something um, on top of that, so that all your racing gear can also drive with you. Underneath here, by the way, in the front hood, this is also carbon fiber, the whole thing, but here you have also these, you know, cut out parts, and this is actually for pedestrian safety. So otherwise carbon fiber is really, really stiff, doesn't give away. And so from the outside, when the pedestrian then hits the front hood, then there's also, you know, like a little bit more flexibility. This is a very unique thing to do here with carbon fiber. Pricing starts here at 209,000 euros. That's the German price I already have here for the normal GT3. And if you go for a special package, like the Weiser package or then the lightweight package for the Touring, with some options and so on, you can close into about a quarter million. So um, yeah, really price hefty, but uh, Porsche says actually that all the prices 
rather went up than went down for you know all the uh, prestigious owners of this vehicle here. It's not limited though, but of course not so many people can actually buy one and also they cannot build endless ones uh, of these. So very interesting what's going to happen with this new updated generation then here.